Learn more about how to eat for better health by planning and preparing meals and using nutritious substitutes. Save time, money, and enjoy a better diet using tips from our experts. Plus, get free recipes on today's episode of CHS Presents Lifestyles at the Heart of Health. Hello, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jane Hansen. Today's conversation, are you tired of spending too much money on takeout? Is cooking the last thing on your mind after a busy day? Meal preparation just could be the solution. With a little pre-planning, meal prep can help you create nutritionally balanced meals and save you time and money. Here to speak more about mastering meal prep is registered dietitian Stephanie Pappas from the Cancer Institute at St. Francis Hospital. Welcome. Thank you for having me. This looks so <laughs> yummy and to know it's good for us makes That's me right. feel even better. That's so right. thanks so much for being with us. Now meal prep is something I have to confess I do not do a lot of because you're going to be I a convert today. <laughs> and I'm good because I want to be converted because I really yeah. do believe that it's the solution to a lot of things. Absolutely. I get home at night and I'm just too darn tired and plus I may not have shopped well there and I go. don't have things in the refrigerator or in the sure. cabinets and so ring I order in. <laughs> Well, you and everyone else, right? It's right. the same story here from so many of our patients that come in. And I want to stress meal prep can be truly life-changing. It's one of these things where just a small effort can reap a really big reward. Okay, so how do you begin that process? What is the first step? Absolutely. So the first step is choosing your recipes for the week. So I usually say pick two, three recipes maximum, mm -hmm. and you make your shopping list from those recipes, which is great. That way you're going to save money at the grocery store instead of buying extra groceries, and you're also going to save time. You're going into the grocery store with a mission, right? And in terms of meal prep, some, some really important benefits too, like you said, temptation control. That's what I always say. Right. Right. That's the worst. Absolutely. After a long day of work, you come home, you have nothing prepared. What do you do? You grab the chips, you grab the cookies, right? You grab the crackers. But this is a great solution yep. to have. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a great solution to have prepared meals ready to go. Okay. So we've, so we've got a recipe mm -hmm. goings and we've gone to the grocery store and yep. we've got uh, we've got everything in hand. Okay, so now how do we go about actually preparing the meals? Do we take like a Sunday afternoon? Do we, wh yeah. what do you do? So I usually say a weekend works best, like a Saturday or a Sunday. Mm -hmm. All you need is maximum one to two hours to get all this meal prep done for the Kidding. week. Kidding, really? Is great. Yep. Wow. And I'm going to give you some, some meal prep hacks that are going to help. Um, but there's three different types of meal prep. So you can really start small. You can start with just preparing staple ingredients for the week, right? So right over here, here I have some quinoa salad, mm -hmm. some grilled chicken, and some grilled vegetables, right? This is great because even if you only have maybe 30 minutes on the weekend, this is excellent. You can add a scoop of quinoa to um, any type of dinner. You can add some grilled chicken to your salad sure. or add some roasted vegetables to any entree. So this will be a huge time saver during the week. So you make uh, obviously a larger quantity of exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. So and, and you can refrigerate this all week long? All week long. Yeah, wow. absolutely. Last about, I would say, four, four days. Do we need to be careful about how we grill the chicken just in terms of what we put on it because that adds sure, a lot of sure. additional calories. So at St. Francis, I mean, we're so conscious of heart health. And one of the things I love to do with grilled chicken is just adding some nice herbs and spices. You don't need a lot of salt. You don't need a lot of butter, things like this, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, olive oil? Olive oil, yep. Yeah, I'm a big olive oil fan. <laughs> is there any other oil that you use? Um, well, the other oil I was going to talk about today is avocado oil. It's oh, one of my favorite oils. Oh, I love oils. avocados. Yeah. And, really? Um, I actually love the avocado oil in the spray bottle that's propellant free, so you get no chemicals. It's just avocado oil. And what's nice about this is if you're grilling any veggies, all you do, you simply just spray an even nice coat on your vegetables. 
A little pepper, throw it in the oven, ready to go. Wow. Yeah. It's going to save you a lot pepper, of calories, too. No salt? No salt. Did you catch that? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. That's a great idea. I've sure. never seen avocado oil oh, before. Oh, I love it. So good. And very, very heart healthy. Lots of heart healthy Can you fats. find it most places? Yeah, it's becoming much more popular now. Okay. You well, can I love also that. find like an olive oil spray, too. Yes. Um, and I do have that, but I've never seen the avocado, and I'm, I'm an avocado nut, although yeah. I know you shouldn't eat them too much. But Everything I, in moderation. Right. <laughs> yes. But, um, I've heard that before right. somewhere. <laughs> okay, so we've got the basics. Right, now basics. what do we do? So that's one way to meal prep. The other way to meal prep is something called batch cooking. It's where you take one recipe, maybe like a stew or a chili, you make a ton of it, and you freeze it. You portion it out and you freeze it. That mm -hmm. way you can kind of enjoy it all season long. But my favorite type of meal prep is make-ahead meals. So you have all your meals pre-portioned out. They're ready to go for the week. Okay. So I prepared for you two recipes here. Um, the first is my one sheet pan teriyaki salmon dinner. This is my all-time favorite because there's virtually no cleanup. Okay? All you do is take a sheet pan, you line it with some parchment paper. I like that, no cleanup. Right? No cleanup. Who wants to Perfect. do the dishes after a long day, right? <laughs> um, you put your protein on there. I chose my salmon, a little bit of a low sodium teriyaki sauce. And, and then. Did you make that mm -hmm. yourself or did you buy that? This is store bought. You can get some low sodium good varieties. If okay. you certainly have the time, you can make it at home. Right. Um, and then a variety of assorted vegetables. So, one of the biggest complaints I hear about meal prep is that cutting vegetables takes so much time. Right. 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 So what I like to do is try and either buy things that don't need to be cut, right? Mm -hmm. So sugar snap peas, um, baby carrots, cherry tomatoes. But aren't they more expensive when you, like if you buy the broccoli that's already torn Sure. Up. So this broccoli I cut for myself, right? Okay. For me, you know, if I have at least two vegetables I don't have to cut, cutting a head of broccoli is no big deal. Yeah. Well, I um, love these carrots. Yeah. It's like, that's tri -color. my thing. Uh -huh. Sure. And they taste so good. Oh mm -hmm. my God, delicious. So is this supposed to be enough food for what for if this food? this would be for two people or for two meals okay yep so one salmon per person that's a lot half of vegetables the veg a lot of veggies i'm yeah. a big veggie fan well me too but that i mean that's a lot of veggies. yeah hmm. and if you have veggies left over you can certainly utilize that throughout the week sure you can put it in with the quinoa absolutely absolutely <laughs> i'm catching on to this now <laughs> so you said there were so we've talked about the basics. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the bat, the batch cooking. Yep. So uh, our one sheet pan meal. Right. And then one of my other meal prep tips is instead of cooking everything with one method, instead of cooking everything on the stove or everything in the oven, utilize different appliances. Right. It's going to save you time. So if you have this in the oven, mm -hmm. you have your quinoa on the stove. Mm -hmm. Put something in the crock pot. Right. It's going right. to take. You know, it's going to be mindless. It takes. It took me less than ten minutes to put all the stuff into the crock pot for the chili that I made today. You're kidding. Yes. And then you have that go and you come home to a great meal. Okay, so what is in the chili? Yes, yeah, so it's a vegan lentil chili. Mm -hmm. I love adding lentils to my chili. I think it gives a really nice nutty I flavor. I love lentils. And I have a little sample for you to try over there oh, as I'm, well. I've been <laughs> eyeing it since we started, yeah. wondering how quickly can I dive into it's, that. It's delicious. Um, so we have lentils. I put a little butternut squash in there, some beans, lots of veggies, really, really rich in vegetables. What if you wanted to add some protein? You certainly could. You can add a little ground turkey, chicken, anything like that is fine. Beef, you say no to? You know, I always say be careful with the red meat. Try and limit it. We know, you know, any sort of excess red meat intake is linked to colorectal cancer. And so we want to just be careful with that. So what about these chips? Yeah, so these are lentil chips. One of my favorites. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. So lots of I've fiber. I've never seen those either. Where do you find them? They're, Whole Foods has them. They're coming up in many grocery stores. Um, but these are great, and they kind of tie in that lentil flavor from the chili. So it brings it all home. It's but, really, really delicious. But are they baked? I mean, are those things, yeah. are they, they're okay for you? They're yeah, good for you? Yeah, they're very good for you, absolutely. Mm. And so I have the chili here served two ways. So this is how you can kind of get creative. Uh -huh. Instead of making like five different recipes, I have the chili with the chips here and some jalapenos. And then I also have the chili stuffed inside a sweet potato. And I topped it with some Greek yogurt instead of sour cream. Oh. Your calories. Which, by the way, I happen to love Greek yogurt oh. more than I like sour cream. Sure. Lots of protein. But it's got to be the Greek yogurt that has no flavor to it. Yes, plain. You don't want to put vanilla on there. It's I not going to really. taste good. <laughs> or blueberry yeah. or something like that, although I love blueberries. And then how did you, you, did you bake that? So I baked it. You know, you can certainly put it in the microwave. Sometimes I'll even throw a sweet potato in the crock pot with the chili, mm -hmm. right? I did put the butternut squash in for a little bit more of a nice flavor. Um, but this right here, one meal, 
you get two separate recipes out of it. Um, and one other thing I did want to mention is you have to be prepared in terms of your gear. What are you putting these things in for right. the week, right? So I have here two nice containers. Mm -hmm. I like to get stackable containers. Mm -hmm. um, and since I work at the Cancer Institute, I'm really passionate about cancer prevention. So we want to make sure we're getting BPA-free containers or glass containers, right? That way your food's stored safely. Okay, so you're doing, so the bulk of this we're going to be putting into the refrigerator. Into the refrigerator, yeah. Okay. But the chili, I would assume, is something that you might put in the freezer, you'd put it into Absolutely. a small container. It's so versatile, right? You can certainly freeze it and enjoy it all season long, or you can have it that week. Mm. Um, something like the fish, I would say, enjoy earlier in the week and have a little bit of a better flavor and save some of the vegetable stuff for later on. See what I'm doing? I'm getting ready. Yay. One more question. What else did you put in the quinoa? So the quinoa has beans, corn, um, some scallions, some tomatoes, and a nice little, um, like a salad west kind of vinaigrette that I put together. What's in it? So it's got a little bit of apple cider vinegar, a lot of different spices, olive oil. Mm. Super simple. Mm. You like it? This is delicious. You've got cheese on here though. So. I put a little bit of cheese on there. You gotta get a little bit of flavor in there. But so what kind of cheese? Does it matter? I get a reduced this is really fat. Good. I'm glad you like it. Um, mm -hmm. A reduced fat Mexican cheese blend. So all you need is a little bit of a garnish. You really don't even need it at all, honestly. There's such good um, flavors in there. And that's butternut squash. I was gonna say, there is squash in here. Yeah, yeah. So oh. you, I sneak in some extra veggies in there. Mm, it's kind I'm of a, it. a nice way to mask all the vegetables. So the quinoa, there's mm -hmm. a lot of packaged quinoas out there. Yes, there are. Are they, which, which are very instantaneous. I mean, they're much like easier. Like the microwavable ones and yeah, things like that? Yeah, are those good or do you have to be careful about the ingredients? Definitely be careful with the ingredients, especially a lot of them will add excess sodium. So you really want to look at the sodium content in those. Um, but certainly, you know. so good. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Mm -hmm. um, making it at home really is going to be your best bet. And it's going to save you so much in terms of calories, sodium. You know, when we're dining out, when we're eating takeout, we're really blind to ingredients. We don't even know. know what we're eating. I you know. know. And I think I'm being good. And then I'll realize that. That salad has something in it that exactly. added a lot of calories, and frequently it's the dressing. A hundred percent. I'm really careful about not when I about keeping the dressing on the side sure. for almost everything. Any condiments really are going to be loaded with lots of salt, lots of added mm. things that we don't want to be eating. These are good. I know, right? I really like. I them. Only brought you the best, Jane. Only brought you the best. And, and it's an <laughs> excuse to eat. It seems like chips. There you go. I like it because it's a little bit lower carb. It's going to be higher in fiber. And like I said, it really brings home all those flavors in the chili, you know? Okay, well, we are going to take a quick break. I'm going to eat. <laughs> but still to come, too much salt, sugar, and fat are what? Not Bad good. Bad for you. <laughs> We're going to talk about healthier substitutions that we make that will still taste good. That's next, after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to CHS Presents Lifestyles at the Heart of Health. We are now joined by Richard Dosher, Director of Food and Nutrition Services at Good Samaritan Hospital Medical Center. Welcome. Thank Good you to have me. you here. Thank you. We just talked about salt, sugar, and fat. How bad is it for us? Um, well, within the medical and nutrition communities nowadays, there is, you know, um, a lot of widening research in terms of um, how all of those ingredients within the foods, either the reliance on commercially prepared foods or foods that we're producing at home, um, is increasing our risk for obesity, type 2 diabetes, um, and uh, cardiovascular disease. How much do you think people eat out on a regular basis or order in food, take out, whatever they do? A ton. We we live. Um, you know, we all live crazy lifestyles. We have um, we have a ton of different focuses between families, friends, professions um, that certainly draw us away from preparing our own foods. Um, and there is definitely an increased reliance on any of those commercially or takeout products. So, and I understand that that is troubling for. A a hospital and, a, and health services that are really battling to with this obesity issue and just darn good health, right? Absolutely. Um, so the problem is, though, all that stuff, salt, sugar, fat, tastes so good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So how our, do we... Our palates are trained to... Yeah, to so how do we... Let's take them one by one. Sure. Sugar. Mm -hmm. 
What can we substitute for sugar? And I know you're not going to tell me it's artificial sweeteners. <laughs> <laughs> we have other means. Um, so, you know, when, whenever I embark on a conversation, because myself, chefs and dietitians, were always asked this. Mm -hmm. um, whenever I embark on a conversation, I always, um, you know, make sure that uh, people understand that there is a trial and error component to making any sort of substitutions to any of our tried and true recipes. Uh, but most of the time, in particular sugar, we can reduce that by anywhere between one third to one half of what the recipe recipe calls for. Um, within baked goods, um, we can certainly, um, you know, sub out some of that sugar or, um, and replace it with, um, there's a ton of spices available, cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, cloves, um, to help impart some more of that flavor. Um, we can also use, there are um, a ton of commercially available extracts such as uh, vanilla or almond that's also uh, widely available too. too to help also impart flavor. But you're, you're really suggesting that you kind of have to test it. Yes, absolutely. And, and see what works best for you. Absolutely, because again, what, what people um, you know, tend to forget about, especially with baked products or pastries, is that there is a science behind the cooking. And these ingredients do work harmoniously together. And each ingredient plays a vital role. So sugar and salt have hydroscopic properties. They help food or um, that final dish to re retain moisture. It also allows other volatile flavors to be released. Um, sugar is a sweetener. Um, fat, uh, you know, not only imparts or affects appearance, but then also final product texture and density. Um, so just by simply removing something is not always going to produce that that you know familiar final product. You know, my one of my aunts used to always make my favorite chocolate cake when I'd come home from college and it tasted so delicious <laughs> and I asked her for the recipe and it had lard in it yes <laughs> and I'll never forget that going oh I'm not cooking with lard, lard. or baking with lard <laughs> salt I have to confess I love salt mm -hmm. um, and I know it's not good for me salt causes things like high blood pressure right an assortment Absolutely. of different Potential things that fluid yep. um, so what can we do to get rid of the the salt. In terms of reducing the reliance on salt, we can start by sauteing, um, you know, a assortment of aromatics such as garlic, uh, onion, shallots. Um, we can also, there are a assortment of, of, of flavored oils and vinegars available on the market. There's actually whole retail stores devoted to that as well, um, which impart a ton of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, there are also, you can also incorporate f uh, fresh and dried herbs. Um, a quick tip is dried herbs at the beginning um, so that you can, it has time to release its flavor in your soups, sauces, and stews. Um, and then typically finishing off dishes with fresh herbs. Are those oils, is there anything to look for with the, the infused oils that in, on the labels, are there any cautions there or are most of them pretty good? No, most of them have a good solid base in terms of either olive oil, extra virgin, uh, extra virgin olive oil, safflower oil, uh, because the, the oils that they use do have to be of neutral within flavor um, so that then they can infuse anything else that they do want with it. And all of them contain the mono and polyunsaturated fats, which are obviously very, very cardio protective as well. Yeah, yeah I'm just amazed at the options that are out there that, to help bring flavor Absolutely. without having to put in the things that are bad for us. Mm -hmm. It's really, we've really come such a long ways. Absolutely. Um, okay, so let's talk about that fat. You just mentioned fat. Mm -hmm. What else can you substitute? We talked about flavors, but sometimes fat, there's nothing that can tra trade it up, really. Take its place. Well, within baked goods, what we, you know, a, a time-tested approach to reducing either the butter or shortening is to swap it out or replace half of that volume with either mashed um, bananas or uh, unsweetened applesauce. They also have commercially prepared fruit purees that are down your baker's aisle that you can also use too. Um, you can also substitute out for one whole egg a quarter cup of egg substitute to reduce the total amount of calories and saturated fat. When preparing hot foods, um, you know, again, uh, using, looking at the type of, of fat that you're using to cook with, like you had just mentioned, instead of using lard or butter, you know, looking for more of those healthier oils to start your, um, you know, stew or, or braising or sauteing process. Um, you can also, for, you know, soups, um, uh, you can also use a, a trick of the trade within the culinary world of, of skim milk with flour and create a slurry um, to help thicken up that cream-based sauce or a natural approach 
boiling potatoes and pureeing those in as well. Wow, I've never mm -hmm. thought of any of that. That's a great idea. Okay, so these strategies, are you implementing them a Good Samaritan? We most certainly are. We have, we have, we are definitely proud to say we're putting our money where our mouth is. <laughs> um, in terms of, so uh, every day we have these three very big commercial steam kettles um, in which that we are uh, making up our own uh, homemade stocks. So chicken, beef, and turkey stocks on a daily basis um, to reduce the reliance on either, you know, bouillon or uh, uh, commercially prepared broths for any of our, for the base for our soups and for uh, soups, uh, soups and sauces. Um, we also use infused oils for our chicken and uh, fish dish as well. Um, we also replace butter in our mashed potatoes with a herb infused extra virgin olive oil um, and our macaroni and cheese dish, which is which is uh, honestly one of those comfort foods that uh, tend oh. to go the most within of the course. hospital. Why wouldn't you want that if you're in the hospital? That's right. So we we've substituted out some of the cheese and the heavy cream for um, uh, puree butternut squash. So that is fantastic. Absolutely, we're it's very good. very proud of all the efforts that we've made. Yeah, and and I'm sure that you'll continue to get, you know even make them better as you go along with Absolutely. new products that come on the market that'll be really useful. It's good that 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 we've got manufacturers who are creating things like that that give us some options that aren't so hard. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. All right. Well, stick around because we're going to take a break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more. CHS presents Lifestyles at the Heart of Health. Welcome back to CHS Presents Lifestyles at the Heart of Health. Stephanie Pappas has rejoined us now, Richard Dosher. Um, thanks again. Stephanie, you were just listening to some of the things that, that Richard said about these substitutions. I guess the bottom line and one of the complaints that people frequently have is they just don't taste as good. Do you buy that? I don't buy it. I mean, I'm a dietitian, so, so my whole job is just teaching people to love healthy, nutritious foods. And I think, especially if you really make a commitment and you do these things over a period of time, your taste buds really do change and they adapt. Um, and like we said, things even like the crock pot chili, utilizing all different herbs and spices to really get some awesome flavors in there. That's going to take away any need for extra salt or sugar, anything like that. Do you think that if people, I mean, think just the, just the notion of committing myself to that time on a weekend to make these meals, it's like, how am I going to do that? 